Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I have brought to you some questions that can be of use for you all if you are preparing for RBI Sabi Nabad Phase One examination. And these questions can be used in your banking PO level exams as well. So let's begin with this video. But before that, I have two most important announcements for you all. Basically, they, those are not announcements. Those are the informations that I repeat often in my videos. First one is that this PDF is downloadable. You can download it from the Telegram channel of ours. So that was the information for the new students. And the second point here is that today we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic in the GK factory section. And that topic is the future oil. So what is that? The future oil on which the cars will be run. So this is the topic. If you want to know what this topic all about, what is it with that we are going to discuss, then you have to stick with this video till the end of this video. And believe me, guys, the entire video is very useful for you all, not only from the perspective of examination, but also it will enhance your general awareness. So let's begin on that note. So the first question is, with which country has India signed a letter of intent to collaborate in the field of digital media? Vietnam, Philippines, uh, Thailand, Japan, and Australia are in the options. So right here, uh, the right answer here is Vietnam. Okay, option A is the right answer. So basically, in this uh, collaboration, India and Vietnam will share information and experience in regulatory frameworks and policies on digital media and social networking. So this is basically another step of India to strengthen the regulation, regulatory framework for digital media as well as social networks. And with this collaboration, not only India is benefiting, Vietnam is the one that is benefiting more. So basically, this is a mutual collaboration between India and Vietnam for boosting the digital media a regulatory framework in India. Now this year completes the five years of comprehensive strategic partnership between India and Vietnam. This is again a very informatory po uh, point here. You don't need to memorize it at all. 2022 marks the 50 years of diplomatic relations between India and Vietnam. So on that note, do you know that on which uh, global platforms or in which groups India and Vietnam collaborate with each other. So there are two predominant uh, groupings in which India and Vietnam collaborate with each other and those groupings are first one is India Asian Forum So we all know the Asian countries and India conduct their summits and these summits serve the purpose of collaboration between India and the Asian nations. Next is Mekong Ganga Cooperation. So Ganga is the river of uh, India. Mekong is the river which passes through five Southeast Asian nations which also include the Vietnam. So my question from you all here is that you have to name the rest of the countries from where Mekong River goes through. And because of these two rivers, uh, this cooperation is named Mekong Ganga Cooperation. This is the cooperation between five Southeast Asian countries, the names of which you are going to tell me in the comment section below and India. Let's move on to the next question, which has become the first EU country to legalize the cultivation and personal use of cannabis. Malta, Lichtenstein, Monaco, San Marino, and Dora. So out of these five options, Malta is the right answer. Malta has recently legalized the cultivation and personal use of cannabis. Whereas in the world, Uruguay was the first country to legalize the use of cannabis, the cultivation and use of cannabis. So this much information is enough for you from the exam point of view. Let's have a look at the location of Malta. So it is near Italy. If you see it and if you zoom it out, then you will find that here Malta is located and this is Italy. So it is below Italy. So I hope that the location is now clear. Moving on to the third question, uh, which country has arraigned India in World Trade Organization for providing excessive sugarcane subsidies. So guys, this is again a very interesting question if you understand it, okay? 
so we have brazil thailand australia only and c only a b and c the right answer here is option d that is brazil and australia brazil australia and guatemala so these three countries have accused india in the world trade organization that india is providing excessive subsidies more than the limit that is prescribed by in, uh, by the wto in the agreement on agriculture okay so because of those subsidies india is able to produce more and these countries fear because these are the countries that produce most of the sugar these the, these countries are one of the major exporters of sugar in the sugar cane in the world market so they fear that if india continues to produce this much amount of sugar cane then it will definitely hamper their exports as well because then india would be in a positive position to lower its price and sell more sugar cane in the international market which will definitely impact these countries so what they did they went to wto they accused uh, india of providing excessive subsidies now guys recently the panel of wto has also uh, affirmed their acquisition that yes india is providing excessive subsidies which is in violation to the wto agreement on agriculture so now here two question emerges first of all what is the entire structure of wto how can a country go there and then uh, what is the basic structure what is the process of getting the justice second question is now what is the recourse for india so i am going to answer both the questions for you so first let me tell you the entire structure of wto of getting the dispute resolved so first in the first stage we have uh, the disputing country so let's say india and china let's take the example here india and china both are in dispute related to trade okay then what they do they went to the wto so wto provides for the uh, conversation between them provides for the mediation between the disputing parties and for them a cert for that mediation a certain amount of time is given to both the parties to consult and mediate uh, between themselves so that they won't have to go towards the wto for resolution of their dispute then if no party is arriving at any resolution then what will happen wto will form a panel then this panel will assess the entire situation and prepare the report okay then this report goes to the third stage that is dispute settlement body then at the dispute settlement body the members of this dispute settlement body themselves assess the findings of this report and what is the status quo and then they also give their own concludatory report then this report if any of these parties find that this report is not in their favor or it is violating their rights in some or other way they can go to the appellate body appellate body of the wto okay for and here they can make an appeal so that they can get justice against the report that is there in dispute settlement body then this appellate body hears the grievances of the disputed parties and arrives at a solution that is amicable to both but in case if the solution is not uh, adhered to by any of the disputing parties for example in case of this situation for example uh, this body has given a resolution which is in favor of india and china is not adhering to it then wto uh, wto's appellate body will authorize india to retaliate against china by imposing certain kinds of tariff and non tariff barrier so it will basically give a free hand to the grievance party to india that you can take whatever action you want to take against china as your trading partner because now china is not listening to us so basically wto does not give any kind of punitive uh, pun uh, punishment because the punishment this is basically a mediation forum wto does not work as a criminal court okay so it does not give any punishment to other country it just gives a free hand at the end of the resolution to the grievance party to the victim that yes now you have the free hand you can impose tariffs etc etc on the other party the report that has come out right now is this report the panel report 
Okay, so this report has found, has accused India of pr uh, putting excessive uh, sugar uh, subsidies to the uh, sugar cane. It is, India is giving excessive subsidies to the sugar cane producers. Now, what, what is the recourse for India? India, first of all, this report is there at the dispute settlement body. Now, it is working on this report. It is finding out whether this report is authentic or not. Once this is completed and this report comes out, India can make an appeal in the appellate body. But here also there is a dicey situation because as we already know that this appellate body does not have any judge at present. Therefore, it is, we can say it is virtually non-functionary. -func right now it is not functioning properly. It does not have any judge. Therefore, resolution on this case is still a far-flung achievement. Now I hope that this is understandable to you. So that was the entire case of WTO in of India's case in WTO. Now, in 2019, Brazil, Australia and Guatemala accused India. And this report has been released now in December 2021, the panel report, that the limit of the subsidies is that 10% is the limit of the value of production. Okay, so this is the limit and India is exceeding this limit. So now let's have a look at some of the facts related to India's sugarcane market or the subsidies that we are talking about here. Indian government has approved a subsidy of US dollar 475 million for 2020 to 2021. Okay, so this is the sugarcane subsidy that we are providing to the producers. Next, India's sugarcane production for 2020 to 2021 season is estimated at 399.25 million tons, approximately 400 million tons is the production of sugar cane only. Whereas in comparison to this, the total food grain production in India is 308.65 million tons. So only one crop, only sugar cane is being produced in this much quantity. Therefore, the countries like Brazil, which is the world's largest sugar cane exporter, is still in worry. So that's the whole situation. I hope that it is now clear to you all. Moving on to the next question. Uh, which state has introduced the MV curriculum on environment for students of classes first and first to eighth? Guys, right answer is Maharashtra. So basically MV is Maji Vasundara curriculum. Maji Vasundara is the Marathi language from the full, uh, full form of this curriculum, you can easily remember it's Maharashtra that has launched this initiative and the basic purpose is to aware the children, create a, an environmental consciousness among the children at the very early age so that they can become responsible citizens later on in their lives. That's the whole purpose of introducing this curriculum in schools. Next question is with which country has India signed an MOU for the implementation of project creation and equipment of a new meteorological laboratory in the Republican Scientific Specialized Allergy Center. So we have five options out of which Uzbekistan is the right answer. So now recently Uzbekistan, Indian Embassy in Uzbekistan and the Ministry of Investment and Foreign Trade of Uzbekistan. Both of them have signed an MOU and this MOU is basically the uh, grant or we can say the assistance that India will provide for provide to Uzbekistan for developmental projects. Now what kind of development project, uh, development, uh, developmental projects that we are talking about? First one is that the funds will be allocated by India for implementation of this project that aims to create and equip the new meteorological laboratory which is in the Republican Scientific Specialized Allergy Center. So basically equipping this new meteorological laboratory with new kinds of technological equipments, whatever are there, which this laboratory is located in this Scientific Specialized Allergy Center in Uzbekistan. The next MOU stands for equipping the secondary schools with computers and these Secondary schools are located in the Shir Darya region of Uzbekistan. So these are very basic developmental uh, MOUs that India has signed with Uzbekistan. So this is the time for the GK factory. So guys, the future oil that I was talking about is lithium. Now you would be confused, right? Like 
lithium is the oil so i referred to lithium as oil because we are going to shift to e mobility electric vehicles and lithium ion batteries are the major components they are the engines of the electric vehicles basically if you want to say it in a very one line statement so they are the base of evs therefore they are the future oil now similar to the oils now lithium and oil both of them have many similarities first similarity is that the extraction process of oil and lithium both of them are damaging to the environment okay second one is that the cartel that petroleum countries uh, petroleum ex uh, exporting countries had formed similar kind of cartel is still in the workings right now for lithium okay so lithium is also emerging as the new oil the third reason for saying this is that like oil the countries had a race to acquire more and more oil to have more and more energy similar to this right now also the countries are engaging in a race to acquire more and more lithium raw material so that they can produce more batteries now we will come to that first let's know some facts about this lithium which is so much in the air okay right now so first is it's the lightest metal on earth it's the lightest metal on earth its density is the lowest of all metals almost two uh, times lower than that of water these are the very basic facts the discovery of this has been done by the swedish chemist johan Arf, uh, arfvetson who is this person okay johan arfvetson has discovered lithium in 1817 now the future of lithium so the demand of lithium is expected to rise to 1.3 million tons in this decade only and this is purely due to the electric vehicles that the entire world is chasing right now so first of all let's look into the pros and cons of lithium because i told you that lithium is one substance or the extraction of which is damaging to environment then why are the countries vying for lithium in order to protect the environment why are we shifting to lithium ion batteries when they are equally damaging to the environment that in comparison to petroleum and diesel now guys you need to understand this thing that there is a difference here lithium Uh, run batteries lithium run vehicles are not as damaging to the environment as the petrol or diesel run, diesel run vehicles are okay so lithium vehicles uh, electric vehicles in general they have very low emission greenhouse gas emission is very low in lithium ion battery uh, vehicles in comparison to the petrol vehicles in all their stages be it production be it use be it disposal so in the entire lifetime of the electric vehicle the vehicle is emitting less and less greenhouse gas emission only the exploration of lithium is damaging but the entire life use of the vehicles in which the lithium is put is very sustainable in nature therefore the countries are going after lithium so that is only written here you can read it on your own when you will get the pdf of this session now since we have talked about this much and i told you in the beginning also that there is a cartel that is still under the table that is the undercurrent that they can form a cartel so which countries are this you would be thinking that which country is the largest producer of lithium so here you need to know that the countries which have the largest reserves of lithium are these and the countries which produce the largest amount of lithium are these so let's have a look first at the countries that have the lithium reserves bolivia is the first argentina chile usa australia china now here in comparison to this you can see the table of top 5 lithium producing countries only now you would be amazed right you are amazed that how is it happening bolivia which has 21 million tons of lithium is not producing is not coming in the top 5 producers list how is it possible so guys here the answer to this question is that it is purely on the extraction or exploration projects that the countries are running so in bolivia in argentina in chile these countries are very very politically unstable countries therefore no extraction project no big project is running or operational in these countries at present on the other hand australia so here 
the exploration projects are running in their full swing therefore it is able to produce extract this much of lithium and it can it is able to export lithium to other countries as well then we have the child at the second number now here 9 million tons is the reserve and 18000 ton is the production so still the production is very less in comparison to the reserve that the country holds but also the explorers need to take this thing in their mind to understand this thing that how much exploration is sustainable we need to keep this thing in mind the governments of these countries need to think about it because they are at present not thinking about it i guess so because there are many protests in australia in the countries where exploration is being done of lithium there are many protests by the environmentalists that the this is really damaging to the environment so we are just putting uh, we are putting off one damage by causing another damage so this is the situation right now moving ahead so child is the second largest producer then comes china then argentina and zimbabwe now here two things are important that you must be thinking right first is that let me tell you that australia is the country that's the biggest producer of lithium lithium substance ki baat kar rahe hain but if we talk about the lithium batteries and cells then china is the world's largest producer okay but itna consume karta hai china that it needs australia's import of lithium to satiate its own consumption so this is how the situation of china is at present now there is one country that you must be thinking is missing in the list us where is it so us at present is not indulging in very significant lithium exploration projects therefore it satiates its own demands from imports that are coming from argentine and chile so us is completely dependent on these countries for its lithium uh, lithium imports lithium needs however us is one country where tesla is there and it is uh, it is basically working to create the electric vehicles the uh, start the new line of electric vehicles so let's see what is going to happen in the future uh, but before moving ahead let me tell you that the data has been taken from these sources ns energy and us geological survey and it is 2019 period so this data these numbers that you are seeing these numbers belong to 2019 uh, period now that's the more uh, most suitable period to look at the exact production because reserves to utne hi rahenge but production may differ and we had corona in 2020 and 2021 therefore the entire supply chain and the entire production line was also disturbed so 2019 was the most appropriate period that i found but reserves are the estimated reserves that these countries may have this much of reserves so they are not going to change this is the digit that may vary but still you can see that it is very hard for child to take over australia in just one or two year and that to the years of covid so you can here uh, take them as the literal countries the literal sequence as of now and we already discussed that in the coming decade it is 1.3 billion tons that would be required by the world now this picture is taken from the us geological service pdf and from this picture you can corroborate the amounts given here okay so i have taken those amounts from this picture only this is again showing the mine production in 2019 now acha ek cheez main aap log ko batane hi bhul gayi that you don't need to memorize these numbers okay this is just for the fun this is for your information also but numbers ko yaad karne ki koi zarurat nahi because even if you want to cite this thing in one of your answers of esi or any uh, examination be it upsc or esi so you don't have to cite the exact amounts of reserve that these countries are having so you can skip that very well you can just understand that these are the countries that are producing much and much uh, lithium or uh, having lithium so much in the content now this is guys the abc triangle the lithium triangle of the world bolivia argentina and chile we have already discussed they have so much amount of uh, lithium available so this is also known as abc triangle argentina bolivia and chile so that was one thing that i wanted to show you and australia is a country that is presently producing more and uh, more and also exporting to the countries like china which is exporting the 
cells which is creating the cells as well uh, the lithium ion batteries and cells for its own consumption as well as it is also exporting to the country now india what does india aim to do india here aims to create its own acc manufacturing hub now bahut interesting hai yahan pe acche se sunna theek hai now acc are the batteries lithium ion batteries so what india plans to do india plans to import lithium as the raw material and create the batteries within our own country so that we can become energy liberal we can become energy reliant we do not have to rely on another country because we are just import importing the raw material we are not importing the cells okay presently we import all the lithium ion battery cells from china okay presently this is imported from china but through the pli scheme the production linked incentive scheme for the advanced chemistry cells the government of india aims to create india aims to make india a manufacturing hub for these battery cells for two purposes first that we will become energy reliant secondly we can have a dominance in the world if we become the manufacturing hub of acc because we know that the future is the electric vehicles and for इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स लिथियम एंड बैटरीज आर द सोल्यूशन एंड लिथियम आप डायरेक्टली तो डालोगे नहीं यू नीड सेल्स फॉर देम यू नीड द एंटायर क्रिएटेड स्ट्रक्चर सो दैट्स द पर्पज ऑफ इंडिया टू क्रिएट दी ए सी सी मैनुफैक्चरिंग हब सो दैट वी बिकम द एक्सपोर्टर ऑफ दैट ऑल्सो एक्सपोर्टर ऑफ लिथियम एंड बैटरी सेल्स बट गाइज दैट्स द फार फ्लंग ड्रीम राइट नाउ बिकॉज एट प्रेजेंट वी आर नॉट एबल टू मेक द लिथियम बैटरीज इन इंडिया द एंटायर ई uh ev ev lobby that we can say runs on the batteries that are imported from china okay so that's the present situation of india but guys do we have any lithium reserves that's the question lithium reserve hona bhi to chahiye sirf import se kaam chal jayega guys unfortunately we do not have any lithium reserves in india particularly not that much that we become sufficient to produce the lithium ion batteries on our own therefore we still need these countries okay the countries like all country other countries are also there us is there and other countries are also there but particularly we have signed the agreement with argentine with argentine we have signed the agreement for the import of lithium so that we can create the uh, batteries in our own country so that's the present situation that india is dealing with i hope that now it is clear to you uh this is i have already explained why us is not there in the top 5 list because it is not putting significant effort in the extraction of lithium this is also we have discussed one thing that i did not tell you is that geological survey of india is at present conducting exploration surveys in different states you would be shocked to know that from 2014 to 2021 14 projects were conducted by the gsi across india right now seven projects are being run in 2020 to 2021 okay so after so many projects what did we find that we do not have enough lithium reserves guys this is true i'm not being sarcastic this sarcastic this is true that we do not have sufficient lithium reserves and lithium is not only used for electric vehicle batteries it is also there in your solar rooftop in the electronic devices that we use like the laptop the mobile so this kind of lithium battery is used so even if we are able to extract lithium we have other uses of that lithium as well except for creating the lithium ion batteries so that's the present situation so what efforts is india making first effort i have already told you that we have partnered with the abc triangle one of the abc triangle country that is argentine second effort that india is making is that this organization khanish pradesh india limited which is basically a joint venture of different state run companies only so this is acquiring the lithium and cobalt mines across the uh, borders basically abroad okay so that we can have lithium raw material on our own next is the pli scheme for the advanced chemistry battery cells i have already told you this thing and this is the amount the total outlay so this you 
already have memorized from your exam point of view. This is the outlay. You don't have to pay too much attention to it right now. Understand the concept. Okay, so these advanced chemistry cells are basically the cells that store electricity in the form of chemical energy. And then we can recreate the electricity as and when we require. Like we have the duro cell, we have small battery cells. What do they have? They have a very basic chura uh, is there in the cells. So similarly, the, the function of this cell is performed by the ACC battery. It contains the energy in the form of chemical substance and then when we need the electricity, it will produce the electricity, it will give the electricity. Now, lithium is a component of A double C, the advanced, electric, uh, advanced chemistry cell. India is becoming, is aiming to become a hub of lithium ion battery cell. Okay, so after so many efforts, why are we lagging behind in adopting EVs. So this is basically, I would say, an, an extra topic in the lithium section only, but I added it because we were discussing about the lithium ion batteries, the major thing that is needed for electric vehicles, and electric vehicles is one thing that we need very desperately. We as in the entire world need it very desperately, although not at the cost of environmental damage that we are doing in the exploration of lithium. But what can we do? We can only discuss and have facts here, okay? So first of all, EV production ke liye, we have fame scheme. Faster adoption uh, and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles scheme which was launched in 2015. It got extension, the phase two of this scheme got extension and now till which year is this scheme valid? This is your another question that you are going to mention in the comment section below. So. I was discussing about the reasons for which India is lagging behind in the adoption of EVs. First of all, the cost is very high. Not only the purchase cost, but the maintenance cost of the batteries. Okay, once the batteries is overwrought, then we need to change it. And for changing the battery, the cost is very high. So that's one reason for which the people are not able to uh, adopt the two EVs very easily. They are not able to shift to EVs. Since the PLI scheme for ACC aims to create the battery manufacturing ecosystem in India, it will reduce the cost of EVs and give a push to its adoption. So this is the solution here, okay? Moving ahead, it will also have a trickle down effect on other sectors because if EVs are adopted, then the companies that are indulging in EV charging stations, they will also get employment opportunity, the profit opportunity, the... Uh, battery pack manufacturing com uh, companies, the battery recycling companies. So all of these companies, all of these sectors are going to give a, going, going to get a push. If EVs are uh, there in India, if EVs are adopted in India at a large scale. To increase the adoption, the center has launched this same scheme. Now guys, the PLI ACC scheme aims to create the batteries here. So the entire cost of EVs is very much dependent on the cost of the batteries. If the batteries are produced here only, then the cost will be down and overall the cost of the EVs will also be down. So that's also another benefit of the scheme. So here this session ends. I hope that you have, you must have got to know something new about the lithium, new about anything in this video. So you need to subscribe the channel, like this video, share it among your friends. Thank you so much guys for watching this video.